Narcissists can't access joy. They can't. Because part of the prerequisite for joy in a person's life is gratitude. When's the last time your narcissist expressed gratitude for you, about you? Not about the things you do, not about what you say, not about how you show up, but you as a person. Have you ever wondered if a narcissist is actually capable of finding true happiness? Maybe it seems like they found a piece of it or they seemed happy when they're with you, but they still seem to have what we've talked about before, the void. Maybe you know someone who might have narcissistic tendencies, who always seems to be unhappy or always seems to be looking for the next best thing, trying to fill sometimes a void. You might be curious of like what this actually looks like when we talk about narcissism and happiness. Does it actually connect? Is it actually possible? Can a narcissist actually be happy? Well, if you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse, what it looks like, how narcissists think, how they interact, how they react, all different things, and a lot of times using examples from my own life. If you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one to be able to answer questions or work through some of the healing process, knowing more about it, you can go to rawmotivations.com. We'd love to be able to help you out there. Well, I work with helping to bring awareness to it, but then also healing, growth, change, development, trying to help people move through the healing journey of breaking the trauma bond, the rumination, to be able to get free from it. When we talk about narcissists, oftentimes we're looking at this aspect of not being able to touch into happiness. But is that actually true? What does that actually look like? So today we're going to look into some of the aspects of happiness. Narcissists are known for having a grandiose, a self-image, a big like, oh, this is all about me, right? And then also a lack of empathy towards others. But what about their own happiness? Like, how does this actually look? So in this video, I'm going to discuss three different reasons whether or not a narcissist is capable of experiencing genuine happiness and the reason why they might struggle to be able to find it. And last, I'm going to explain why narcissists struggle with joy in that concept. Okay, so number one, narcissists have a deep-seated need for uh, admiration and validation. Okay, a narcissist is always looking for someone else to be able to validate them, to be able to give them praise, to be able to help them in the aspect of pumping up their self-worth or self-esteem. Now, at first you might be like, this doesn't make sense because they seem like they're full of themselves. Why would they need someone else to pump them up? Well, there's a piece of it that is incongruent with the mask that they've actually put out there. Narcissists might say, hey, I'm the best in the world, but they know that they're not, which is why they have a mask, why they have a different version of reality there in front of them. This oftentimes produces a back and forth of like, wait a second, what's real? Is the narcissist real? Is the mask real? And you start to get confused about it. At the end of the day, a narcissist is looking to you to either react or respond a certain way to make them feel power and control and to help validate their superior status. For me, a lot of times I would want to put other people down so I'd feel better about myself. So if I met someone who was making more money than me or was more intelligent than me or is prettier than me or whatever it might be, I would want to make sure I would put her down. Like I would bring her down to my level so that I would feel better about myself. Getting with that person didn't raise up my value. If anything, it showed me the gap of the man that I was versus who I actually could be and I didn't like that. So I had to pull someone down to my level so I'd feel better about myself. Well, with this attention and admiration, you're going to see narcissists that crave it. Like they're looking for praise. They're looking for validation. They're looking for someone else to be able to fill, oftentimes what we call that void. This will lead to them being unhappy, them being empty, because it's not going to actually satisfy and sustain long term. These might be like little highs, little excitement, little things that make them feel better in the moment. And so oftentimes when they don't see that, when they don't get that, they're like, well, maybe I can find this somewhere else. Maybe I can find this with someone else. Maybe I can find this at another job. Maybe I can find this in another person to have sex with. All these different things that end up hurting them and hurting the relationship and damaging you more than what you'd ever imagine. Think of it this way, a narcissist that seeks attention and validation, whether that's through online presence, or whether that's through interaction with you, or whether that's through a job, all these things are going to continue to find themselves unhappy and unfulfilled because they're chasing something. They're chasing all this external validation, and as a result, they're not able to actually work on themselves. This will lead you feeling crazy because you always have to give to this other person. Like, give to them, give to them, give to them, and it's never enough. No matter what you do, you're not going to get to the place where they're like, oh my gosh, you're perfect. Nope, it's always like, oh, you meet their standards? 
oh, they just changed. Actually, I forgot to tell you this. Oh, actually this. Wait a second, you forgot to do this. And it's always this one-up game to make sure that they're superior and still in charge and control of you. All right, number two. Narcissists struggle with emotional regulation. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, emotional regulation is super hard for a lot of narcissists because how we engage with emotion is also at the same level of like how we engage with weakness and vulnerability. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But when we talk about emotion, a lot of times people say narcissists are devoid of emotion. They don't have emotion. They don't have feelings. And it's not true. Uh, just because they're narcissists doesn't mean they don't have feelings and they don't have emotions. Those are just innate to humans. Okay, but the thing is how they actually process them, how they actually deal with them, how they compartmentalize them and put them to the side. A lot of times a narcissist will feel a certain emotion and will box it up. I did this growing up not knowing about compartmentalization. I literally knew that my mind had boxes in it. I would have a box of certain type of sadness and I would go to it and pull stuff out of it, feel sad for a moment, put it back in and shove it back into the dark recesses of my mind so I wouldn't have to deal with it. But then when I got to a situation that had to have me deal with sadness, I didn't have to. I was like, I already processed it. I'd already done that. This happened over and over throughout my life, never realizing what I was actually doing was training and compartmentalizing my mind to only process certain things when I wanted to, which left me a lot of times completely disconnected from a situation because I didn't care. I'd already dealt with it. I'd already figured it out, that kind of a thing. Also produced a lot of sense of superiority, bunch of other stuff, okay? Narcissists struggle with this type of emotional regulation. Like a lot of times this will lead them to experience intense and overwhelming feelings and emotions. Think of it like anger, jealousy, envy, a lot of different pieces in there of being like, wait a second, I have to control you so you don't leave me and then I'll feel rejected. I have to control you because you're getting too close to someone else and I'm envious of that relationship. Like you'll see all these things come out. And a lot of times this will become so consuming that they'll end up making sure that you stay isolated from everyone else. It will shove out any opportunity of happiness or contentment for them because it's like constantly trying to make sure that they're in charge of you. Now, being in charge of you looks many millions of different ways, okay? But the end of the day, it's this aspect of trying to make sure that they are above you, like they are over you, that you serve them, all those different types of pieces, okay? Um, think, think of it this way, a narcissist who's envious of maybe your success, may feel intense anger and frustration and they're gonna lash out. It, just, it might be something that they'll ruin the relationship or they'll just lash out trying to bring you again down. We see this a lot of times with men, with narcissistic males that get with a non-narcissistic female that makes more money than them. See this countless times. And what happens is they get in the relationship and the man thinks, oh, if I get with this person by osmosis, I will look better, have better status and be, be more intelligent and make more money. Like literally that's like the idea that's going on there. And so he gets with this person and she makes more money and he's like, oh, like this is what I'm going to be like. And then realizes that it actually doesn't change his worth or change his value, but he's actually the same exact person that's not showing up as a producer. So he looks at that and he's like, wait a second, now I need to bring her down. So he starts belittling, saying she's spending too much time at her job, sending, saying, saying that she's a workaholic, saying that she should just be a stay-at-home mom, all these things, and slowly works on bringing down her self-worth so that he feels better about himself. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see this enviness, this anger, jealousy, all these things lash out and be even in subtle ways to make you feel less than so they feel greater than you. All right, number three, narcissists have a fear of intimacy. Now with that, I kind of touched on it earlier with emotions and with being vulnerable. This aspect of vulnerability for a narcissist feels like death. Someone was on, it's like, a vulnerability isn't that hard. I'm vulnerable all the time. And I'm like, you need to understand for a narcissist, a vulnerability feels like death. For an empath or someone who is wide open, vulnerability might feel like a paper cut. Like it's something smaller that you're used to. Narcissist views this being as like the end of the world. This oftentimes will have them struggle with forming deep and meaningful connections because that takes vulnerability. That takes honesty of diving below another level of depth of who they actually are. But this fear of intimacy can prevent them from actually having happiness in their life. And it, ha it, it prevents them from having a genuine human connection. This is the part that you struggle with because you look at it and you're like, wait a second, we were connected. We did have a great relationship. But a lot of times it was fake. 
a lot of times it was false of what it actually looked like on the surface because it was a facade hiding what was actually underneath, okay? Last but not least, one of the things I wanted to bring up was narcissists can't access joy. They can't. Because part of the prerequisite for joy in a person's life is gratitude. When's the last time your narcissist expressed gratitude for you, about you? Not about the things you do, not about what you say, not about how you show up, but you as a person. We typically don't see a narcissist be grateful for anything or anyone except themselves or what they've accomplished. This is how I was for so many years. So as I began to learn about narcissism, as I began to learn about who I was and the shit that was inside, I was like, one of the things I need to attack is being grateful. Grateful of other people, grateful of other things, not grateful of me, but focusing it on other people and other things. And that started to change a little bit of the dynamic and started to set aside some of my ego so I could actually engage in a new version of love than what I'd been viewing for such a long period of time. Hopefully it's been helpful just going through this aspect of understanding narcissists can't be happy and they can't have joy in their lives. While a narcissist may be incapable of experiencing true joy, and true happiness. Like you have to be able to start moving forward in your growth, in your change, because you might be struggling in you feeling happy at all. Maybe this is because you've been sedated by them yelling at you, screaming at you, putting you down. Maybe you've been isolated from friends and family. I want to encourage you to start your healing journey. You can go to escapetoxicity.com, click on the seven day challenge. Would love to have you be a part of that. We'd love to have you start to understand what narcissism is, what reactive abuse looks like, how you showed up in the relationship, the guilt and the shame that you feel for still being in the relationship, and helping you start to move forward with a plan, with a path of healing. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, you can go to rawmotivations.com. Would love to interact with you. Would love to help you understand where you're at and be able to give you answers and guide you moving forward. Hope you guys have a great and fantastic day, and hope you understand now why a narcissist will always be unhappy. 